All right, so uh, as I promised, uh, here's part two. Uh, I'm not going to do any long intro here. I'm just going to leave. Uh, if you haven't already watched the first part, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, but yeah, just getting to it. These are my top ten favorite movies of all time. My absolute favorites. <clears throat> Starting at number ten, uh, Studio Ghibli, of course, one of the most acclaimed uh, animation studios in the world. Um, so many of their movies are like genuinely like some of the best movies ever made. You know, you've got Princess Mononoke, no okay, Grave of the Fireflies, Kiki's Delivery Service, My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, but for my money, their best is Spirited Away. Um, this is actually the first Ghibli movie I watched as well, which might have a big uh, thing in why I love it so much. Um, but it's just um, such a lovely, heartfelt movie. Um, completely original story and characters as well. Like, it's not based on any other fairy tales or... Stuff like that. It does, it does include bits of Japanese mythology and stuff, but um, the story itself is completely original. Uh, Chihiro, young girl moving house with her family, stumbles upon the spirit, uh, uh, an entrance to the spirit world, and uh, her parents, who greedily like, try basically eat, eat too much food there, turned into pigs by the uh, ruler of this area called uh, Yubaba, and uh, to try and find a way to get them back, she has to pay off her, she has to work in this bathhouse for the spirits. Um, it is just such a lovely, lovely movie. It's the best way I can describe it, really. The animation is top-notch, the characters are all extremely likeable, uh, the designs of everything are all really interesting. Uh, no Face, for example, is one of the most uh, iconic characters in um, all of animation you know uh, not not just anime either like you, can, you could show most people uh, no face and chances are they know they've, they've seen it before they know exactly kind of what it is um the voice acting of the dub i think was great as well which uh ghibli usually do pretty well with their dubs um and it's just um creates this otherworldly atmosphere which um is like hostile, kind of similar to what I said about Lost in Translation. It's at times warm and inviting, at times it's very hostile. Um, I think um, the best scene in the movie is the scene where uh, Chihiro and No Face are uh, sat on the train together. Like there's no dialogue at all, and it's just letting you absorb the world that uh, this movie has made for you. Um, and it's those moments which make me love Ghibli movies in particular, you know, because uh, I think all their movies have moments like that where it just lets you breathe and uh, take in the world around you. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen uh, Spirited Away, definitely check it out. Um, if you haven't seen any Ghibli movies, Spirited Away is definitely a good place to start. Uh, I think My Name of Totoro as well would be a good place to start, but for me, Spirited Away is easily their best movie and I don't see anything else topping it for me. Um, number nine, um, I said Avengers Endgame being my favourite movie into you, but it is not my favourite Marvel superhero movie. That is last year's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, this movie is literally everything I could possibly want from a Spider-Man movie, animated or not. Um, it does the characters and story justice in a way that the live action movies never quite have, even as faithful as ones like uh, Homecoming. For example, and as good as Spider Man 2 is as well, uh, this feels like the definitive Spider Man movie for me. Um, incorporating multiple Spider Men as well with the, the whole Spider Verse thing is done really well. The visuals and animation are completely different from anything that's come out. It's so distinctive and uh, immediately, like, it, every all the colours pop against each other in contrast. It is one of the most visually interesting movies you'll ever watch. Um, absolutely amazing. And it's the most true to um, the comic books, you know, in terms of visual style that I think I've ever seen. With the exception of maybe Sin City of 300, in terms of, like, connecting their stories. But in terms of just looking like a comic book come to life, Spider-Verse is just that um, in a nutshell. You know, um... I love the story, I love the voice acting and the characters. Um, it's, this story made me fall in love with Miles Morales. Um, I think that this was uh, a perfect way to show him off. 
And kind of established franchise, so we are getting a sequel, and apparently Spider-Man Noir is getting his own spin-off as well, so we're actually going to get a movie with uh, Nicolas Cage as Spider-Man all the way through. Um, it's got great stakes, great action, it's funny, it's, it's really funny as well, when it needs to be. Um, like I said, this is just for me the definitive Spider-Man movie. Um, it really is, and it's my favourite comic book movie, my favourite uh, superhero movie in general. You know, again, as much as I love stuff like The Crow and uh, Avengers, and even like The Incredibles, um, Spider-Verse is just uh, perfect for me. It is everything I could have possibly wanted from uh, this kind of movie. Uh, again, uh, if you haven't said it, just go out and watch it. Like. Um, I guarantee you, you won't see another movie like it. At least not until the next Spider-Verse movie comes out. Uh, number eight, onto my favourite horror movie of all time, and also, as I mentioned, my favourite John Carpenter movie, and that is uh, The Thing. Uh, yeah, but obviously I've got the set that comes with the remake, which was awful. But John Carpenter's The Thing is a masterclass of uh, tension and payoff. Um, the atmosphere is so uh, like rife with paranoia and uh, uneasiness as these, this this uh, crew realise that there's this shapeshifter amongst them that they can't fully trust anybody amongst themselves. Uh, that any one of them could be this like monstrosity from outer space. And it just keeps building and building and leaving some little subtle things for you to find and pick at, try and figure out who's who. And right when it reaches its peak, that's when you see the monster. That's when the uh, you get the shock and the violence and gore and everything. And it plays off of each other so brilliantly. Uh, in a way that I don't think any other horror movie has done quite as well. I think Alien is probably the uh, best other example of this. You know, using pacing and tension for when you actually do see the monster. It feels like a huge payoff. Um... And the other thing to mention, of course, is the practical effects in this movie are absolutely untouchable. Um, some of the best effects in any movie ever, and for a movie that came out nearly 40 years ago, they still look as good as they do, as good as they did back then. They're still that impressive. And again, comparing that to the 2011 thing, the CG just never looks as good. Um, John Carpenter really had to work with his limitations, make good use of lighting and uh, shot composition to really get the most out of these puppets and makeup effects to hide the limitations. And um, yeah, this is the movie that also made me fall in love with John Carpenter as a director because um, this was such an amazing job directorially. Um, and Every piece of it just comes together to create this masterpiece of uh, horror for me. It mixes in, you know, bits of shock and, uh, you know, monster movie stuff with Lovecraftian elements and more psychological horror. Um, it is a deeply satisfying horror movie, which is something that um, a lot of horror movies, I think, don't get. Like, a lot of horror movies are all about shock. They're all about, you know, putting gruesome images or jump scares in your face. But um, for me, the kind of horror I find scariest is this kind of like slow building with a, with a loud payoff. Alien was another good example, like I've mentioned. The Shining as well was another good example of that. Um, it's it's much more gripping for me. Uh, makes it feel a lot more real. You know, uh, Halloween again is another fantastic example of how to use uh, pacing and tension to really get the most out of a horror movie. And uh, while The Thing isn't the movie I find scariest, it is, in my opinion, like, the best use of it. Um, and the effects are just, like, again, incredible. The setting, the story, it's all just brilliant. It's an absolutely timeless movie. And because it was a remake as well, it was technically a uh, remake of uh, being moved from the 50s to think of another world. But... All it did was take the idea of, uh, you know, these scientists stuck in an Antarctic base with uh, an alien monster that had to kill them, but it really, uh, he really went all out with making it this uh, shapeshifter and bringing in all that uh, paranoia and watching the characters lose their mind as they can't figure out, you know, what's going on, the trust falling. It's just, uh, it's just perfectly paced. 
and it uses all of its tools to its advantage and uh, makes this wonderful, wonderful movie out of it. Uh, yeah, again, uh, just absolutely incredible. Uh, number seven, um, yeah, obviously this list is an entirely subjective look at movies uh, from my perspective, you know, my favourites. And while this isn't like my number one favourite movie, for my money, these are the best movies ever made, and that is Lord of the Rings. Uh, specifically, Fellowship of the Ring for me. I do tend to think of Lord of the Rings as one thing, but if I had to choose one, uh, Fellowship is my favourite. And um, the reason I say I think these are the best movies is because of uh, so many factors. You know, obviously the quality of the movie itself, um, pop culture impact, impact on the industry as a whole, um, Lord of the Rings was such a massive game changer when it came out. Uh, book uh, adaptations of books had never been this ambitious, as far as I can recall. And filmmaking in general, this is like the most ambitious film project ever made at the time. Um, so much work, uh, and, and, and that's the reason I love the extended editions in particular because they come with all of the uh, behind the scenes appendices stuff and that all that stuff is just as fascinating as the movie itself honestly if you ever get a chance watch the documentaries uh, from the making of Lord of the Rings they are honestly just as interesting as the movie itself it's incredible to see how much time and effort went into making these movies and the movies themselves are of course absolute classics um, I think the reason I pick Fellowship as my favourite uh, is because I think it's the one with the less dead weight. You know, there, there are bits I think you could cut from uh, Two Towers and Return of the King, but with Virgin of the Ring, I feel like everything is uh, perfectly placed in that movie. You couldn't take a single thing out. You know, um, Two Towers has a few things with Merry and Pippin, with Treebeard, which I think didn't really need to be in there quite as much. Obviously, Return of the King had the multiple endings and. There's a few other bits and pieces which weren't really essential, I think. But with Fellowship, even with all the additions in the extended edition, it still uh, feels uh, perfectly placed. You know, everything just flows together brilliantly. Uh, as for everything else, like what can I say about Lord of the Rings? You know, the acting is absolutely amazing. All the effects and costumes and the sets and the locations are all absolutely brilliant. Peter Jackson went above and beyond in making Middle Earth feel real and believable. And um, it is like the adventure of a lifetime, like it's such a timeless story, like, well, Middle Earth in general, you know, the books as well. And um, this was the best uh, adaptation uh, you could ever have imagined, really. Like, there's so much love in this movie. Uh, and again, it's something I grew up with, and uh, I, it's never going to leave me. I'm always going to, I always watch, go through uh, all three Lord of the Rings extended versions at least once a year. You know, uh, these movies are special to me. And yeah, there are other movies I do prefer personally for different reasons, but Lord of the Rings is a film series that is always going to be with me. And millions of others as well. It is um, purely iconic. Uh, absolutely timeless, you know, and I, I don't think I need to recommend it. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure everyone watching this would have already seen Lord of the Rings. Uh, number six um, is another anime movie. Uh, this is where you get a real thing for my taste. That's uh, A Silent Voice or uh, Koei no Kitachi. Um, this was kind of an out of the blue one for me. Like, I was just browsing for movies to watch and this popped up and... Uh, it was because of a movie you'll see later that made me open to watch and watch this one, and uh, it's one of the most touching movies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I was uh, a blubbering wreck during this movie. Uh, it's a story about a young boy called Shoya who, uh, while well, he was in elementary school, primary school, if you want to call it, um, and a student came to his class, a girl called Shoko, who was deaf. And uh, he bullied her, like, uh, and eventually this led to all of his friends turning on him and him becoming this outcast who, you know, had his life ruined by bullying. And uh, after a uh, suicide attempt uh, later on in life, he 
tries to find redemption, uh, and it's such a a beautiful uh, redemption story, um, featuring like taking in themes of uh, depression and uh, disability. Uh, it's just it's such a um, it's a movie that hit home for me as someone who suffers with um, depression and mental illness. You know. Um, I think that's the way they portrayed Shoya's uh, depression and anxiety was done in a very realistic way. How he just wants to block the world out. Um, it's very relatable. Uh, I think that the relationship between him and Shoko is so... It's so work, it's so investing watching it develop. Um, Especially considering like all of the uh, background these characters have, the other characters that come in as well are all uh, really interesting. It, it, one of them isn't particularly likable, but they're still a good character, you know. Um, it's such a um, it's a movie that I really related to, even if the scenario is something like I'm, I'm probably never going to have to deal with. It's the uh, the motions and the personalities of the characters that really spoke to me and really got to me. Um, also, the animation is spectacular. The music is it's very ambient soundtrack, but it's really absorbing as well. Really keeps you in the movie. Uh, the writing as well is great, and the voice acting again in the dub I think is done really well. Um, it's. Again, it's one of, this is one of those movies that's really personal to me. I can't guarantee that um, most people will like it as much as I do. I do recommend wa watching it, of course. But, as again, with, with these kind of movies, you're always going to get those personal ones. Uh, and this is one of those for me. Uh, it's not something I can adequately put into words. It's just one of those movies that really struck a chord to me. And uh, it, I absolutely adore and treasure this movie. Uh, number five... Uh, to completely switch gears, Aliens. Uh, in my opinion, the best movie sequel ever made. Uh, it took my, what I said about um, taking a good movie and making everything bigger and better. Uh, and while Aliens, Alien, sorry, the first one, is of course one of the best horror movies of all time, James Cameron's decision to turn it into an action movie was uh, genius, to be fair. It's such a perfect fit. And it doesn't make the original Alien any lesser for it either. <clears throat> if anything, it's kind of reaffirming for the original Alien. Like, yeah, like, there's just the one killer in Alien, and Aliens, there's like loads of them. They get, they fall, but it's... I don't know how to adequately describe it, but it just... It fits. It doesn't contradict anything at all. Um... The effects and everything, and of course, great. The xenomorph is probably the greatest monster in fiction history. I would, I would die on that hill. Uh, Ripley is one of the best characters ever written. Uh, it's amazing to, it's still weird to think that you know, nowadays there's still all this controversy around how people write uh, female characters, or you know, characters that aren't white men, basically. Uh, and, you know, James Cameron was doing it so effortlessly with Ripley. Uh, they, they, honestly, she's, she is a perfect example to use for anyone going into writing for how to portray characters, not not just women, but just how to portray a character. You know, uh, the fact that she's a woman doesn't really come into it. She, she is just a brilliant character regardless. Um, it's, uh, it, it's my favourite action movie ever, to put it bluntly. Uh, and it does still it does still retain horror elements. There is a lot of build up and a lot of tension before you get the payoff of big action scenes, which I really appreciate. Again, too many action movies blow their load way too early. It's one of my favorite action movies are stuff like Die Hard and uh, John Wick. You know, because there's a lot of uh, build up in, instead of just throwing action at you for the sake of it until it becomes numbing. Uh, Transformers, you know, those movies are probably the perfect examples of throwing all of this action and bombast at you to the point where it just becomes absolutely numbing and it's meaningless. Aliens keeps the action and the violence uh, fresh and with uh, the stakes never go away, you know. Um, it's just a brilliant, brilliant action movie. Uh, it's one of those movies you can see that uh, people took as a template and uh, 
carried forward. Like the entire video game industry, like most action video games follow uh, the aliens uh, plot structure to a T almost. Uh, it's, it's influential, it's iconic, it is just flat out one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. It's uh, time, again, another one of those movies that has aged incredibly well for something that's, you know, on the other side of 30 years old now. Uh, it's never been topped, never been topped in my opinion. Uh, number four uh, is uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, my favourite book as well is uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. And um, this, um, I think nowadays, is still an incredibly important movie. Given our current climate, you know, political and racial climate, uh, especially in America, To Kill a Mockingbird is one of the most important stories ever told. The story of uh, Atticus Finch, a uh, lawyer in uh, Georgia State, who has to defend a black man who has been accused of rape during the Great Depression era, as told through the eyes of his child, uh, Scout. Um, and it's just so many lessons to be learned from this movie on how um, how race politics work, uh, the about prejudice, about uh, justice. It's um, another one of the stories that's absolutely timeless and so, so uh, impactful and moving. Uh, uh, Gregory Peck, um, it's one of the best screen performances you're ever going to watch. Um, he is absolutely transcendent as Atticus Finch. He embodies the character and uh, is such an uh, investable character. You know what I mean? He's um, you hang on every single word he says. He commands that scream whenever he's on. And uh, the children in this movie, like kid actors, obviously always get a, a bad rap. But the children in this are so good as well. The the Mary Mary Badham, I think her name was, who played uh, Scout, absolutely incredible for someone as young as she was at the time to put in a performance that good, that convincing. Um, it is a marvel of a movie. It's one that always gets me emotional as well, with good reason, you know. Um, again, I think it's just incredibly important. This is one of those uh, stories that we still need to learn lessons from um, in today's uh, climate. Um, I don't want to get like too political on you or anything like that, but this it, this needs to be shown to a lot of people. This story still needs to be told. Kids still need to be reading this in, uh, you know, in schools or whatever. You know, you need to. This needs to be told. You know, it needs to be shown to people. And for that, it's going to be forever timeless. Uh, again, like as I say, a lot of movies, this one really is absolutely timeless. Uh, number three, if you couldn't guess from the shirt, uh, I am a massive fan of. Jurassic Park, and uh, this is actually one like one of, if not the first movie I remember watching when I was around four years old, and it's always stuck with me ever since. And um, this is like one of those nostalgia movies that uh, is better now I'm an adult. You know, as a kid, I loved the adventure. You know, I loved seeing the dinosaurs and. Uh, the, the action scenes as well kept me hooked, but as an adult, I can appreciate how good the characters and the writing, uh, the effects as a whole, uh, I can appreciate all of that stuff on top of what I loved it for as a kid. Um, this was also one of the most important movies ever made in terms of uh, pioneering visual effects. Uh, without this, without Jurassic Park, we wouldn't have movies like, you know, Avengers nowadays because of the leaps forward it took in terms of computer animation, using it side by side with practical effects, which is how it should be done. It should, it should always be computer effects filling in for gaps that you can't do practically, you know? And that's something I thought Avengers did really well, and it's something that Jurassic Park pioneered, and it's it's still the best looking movie in the series. You know, I, I do enjoy the other Jurassic Park movies, but the first is just an absolute marvel. It's still as good as it uh, was, uh, maybe even better nowadays. I think I think this movie has aged perfectly. Um, I can just one of those movies I can put on whenever 
no issues. I can just watch it. Like, it doesn't matter where, where if it's on TV and I catch part of it, or if I just want to sit down and watch it. It's one of the movies I can watch over and over and over and over again and still love it just as much every single time. Uh, again, like Lord of the Rings, this is a movie I grew up with and it's always going to be with me uh, until the day I die. And speaking of that, number two, everybody has their own favourite Disney movie. You know, and no matter what you say, chances are you're right because really it comes down to personal opinion. And for me, no Disney movie is more important to me than Treasure Planet. Um, because I rediscovered this movie at a very difficult time in my life. And um, while I enjoyed it as a kid, it was what I took away from it when I watched it again when I was around 15 or 16. Uh, that really stuck with me. And uh, for that, it's, it's always going to be my favourite Disney movie. Nothing is ever going to come close to hitting me as personally as this one did. And even taking that away, it's still one of, I think it's one of Disney's most uh, complex movies uh, in terms of its animation, using a mixture of uh, 2D, 3D and deep canvas animation, um, <clears throat> which notoriously made it Disney's biggest flop. But if you have a look around, there's a lot of evidence to support that Disney assassinated their own movie. I won't go into it, but it's definitely worth uh, checking out. There's a, I can't remember who uploaded it, but there's this good... Uh, mini documentary on YouTube uh, called Disney's Biggest Failure. Uh, definitely check that out. There's a really interesting story behind the scenes of Treasure Planet, but for the movie itself, such a great adaptation of um, Treasure Island as well. And this was a, uh, a a passion project for Muscle and Clements. They were trying to get this movie made for years. And um, when it came out, it turned out to be Disney's Biggest Flop again. I'm not going to go into that because I can go on for that for ages. But, um, I'm so glad this movie exists. It really helped me at a time when I needed it. And on top of that, it is a damn good movie as well. Really underappreciated, I think, in the grand scheme of like how people view Disney's movies. This is one of the more underrated ones, I think, because people always jump towards like The Lion King and Aladdin and, uh, <clears throat> you know, The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, stuff like that. They're the ones that always get jumped to as like their best ones, Frozen as well. But, uh, Treasure Planet, I think, is really underappreciated, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of those movies that's always going to be with me. Our number one, my favourite movie of all time, uh, you've probably seen the poster up in the top corner there. It is uh, Makoto Shinkai's Your Name, also known as uh, Kimi no Nawa. Um, this movie is just an absolute gem. It is, uh, has some of the best animation and art design you'll ever see in a movie. It has uh, some of the most likeable and relatable characters. It has this fantastic story grounded in like real relatable emotions. And um, it's the movie that's made me the most emotional. First time I watched it, I spent the last half hour of the movie gross sobbing into my hands. And I can't watch this movie and not be a wreck at the end of it, but it's not... Uh, I can't spoil anything, obviously, but it's not that kind of emotional movie. It's not like The Green Mile, you know, which is kind of... Or Grave of the Fireflies, which, you know, is uh, as good as Grave of the Fireflies is. That movie is a torture to watch emotionally. Your Name has such a wide range of emotions brought into it. Uh, Makoto Shinkai is such a brilliant storyteller, brilliant director, um, and I highly recommend anybody looking up his work, whether it's uh, Your Name, There's Voices of a Distant Star, Fire Centipedes Per Second, The Garden of Words, uh, Withering With You is coming out later this year, which I'm really looking forward to, but Your Name, how it takes uh, these two characters, Taki and uh, Mitsuha, in such a fantastical like way that they basically they swap bodies during their dreams, uh, but it but it does it in a way that's so relatable in terms of the characters, like how they process the what's going on, how they learn about each other, you know, uh, 
it's 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 just amazing. Like this is one of the movies that's really hard for me to talk about exactly why I like it, but it's one of the movies that's just resonated with me from the first time I've watched it. I've watched it so many times since then, and it has, it's only gotten better. Um, yeah, so that's that's uh, what I have to say. Your name is my favorite movie of all time. Um, yeah, three anime movies in my top ten. That says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> But seriously, like uh, any and all of these movies, um, I highly recommend watching if you haven't already. Or even if you have, you know, if you haven't watched Jurassic Park for a while, go watch Jurassic Park again. It's, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. That's uh, These are just my favourite movies. I'm not saying these are the definitive best movies of all time. But uh, thank you for sticking with me if you've watched both parts. Um, if there's enough interest, I might do more of these videos, but I don't want to be, I don't want to just become a countdown channel, you know, because uh, there's built plenty of those, but I am interested in doing more uh, ranking videos. Um, I do have uh, an idea for my next video, because I think uh, with a game I've just finished, so I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, again, thank you for sticking through if you have. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all appreciated as always. I'll leave my Twitter down in the description. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.